I had a 6KD in Warzone 1 and here are 17 tips for Warzone 2. Let's get right into it. Hey guys, Oli Godspeed here and for those of you that are new, welcome to the channel and I hope you learned something new. We are so close to 500 subscribers guys and it would mean a lot if you consider liking and subscribing if you enjoyed the video or just want to see more content like this in the future. With that out of the way, let's get into tip number one and that is pinging on your map. When you first load into Warzone 2 and you try to ping something in game, everything kind of blends in and as a result, it's really hard to keep track of your ping or your teammates. As evidence here, it's extremely difficult to see your ping. So what you want to do is change the color and in order to do this all you need to do is go to interface change your neutral color from white to something brighter i went pink and turned the saturation and brightness up all the way and i also turned the saturation up and brightness up for my enemies and now you can see pings in the game much clearer tip number two is on how to complete strongholds without even killing a bot firstly this public event happens 10 seconds before the first zone closes to complete a stronghold you need to defuse the bomb inside now this seems like a bug but once you start to disarm you can actually run around and not stay locked in that one position to disarm the objective here you can see me completing the stronghold without even killing a bot i just ran outside and defused the objective and you're pretty much done you can actually go to strongholds that other players also complete to access your your loadout so if there are bots nearby keep an eye out for that completing a stronghold gives you your loadout perks satchels armor and ammo boxes and a bunch of kill streaks it also gives you a uav around the area you completed the stronghold and it lasts until the zone closes around the stronghold another key thing to note is that when the strongholds are not being attacked by a team it is white or whatever neutral color you have chosen in my case it will be pink but when it turns red that means there is a team there trying to access their loadout Tip number three is on how loadouts work and predicting their location to obtain it. Now there are three ways to get your weapons now. The first way is to buy your guns at the buy station which will cost you $5,000 per weapon. The second way is to complete a stronghold which gives you your weapons as well as your perks whereas the first method only gives you your gun. The best way to set up early game is to do a safe cracker contract which will give you a lot of money that enables you to buy your loadout weapons from the buy station. Now this is the quickest way to get your loadout guns. Then if there are strongholds nearby, complete them. If not, you can travel to one. Now the third way is to pick up the public loadout drop in the third zone at the 30 second mark. Now keep in mind this loadout package is not specific for you so anyone can grab it so expect it to be hot. They usually drop around six packages in a straight line unless it's one of those games where the circle splits in three. If some of them gets grabbed, they disappear off your map. So you can ping a nearby location to keep track or you can deduce the approximate location if you remember the direction the plane went or use the other packages to determine the approximate location. You can use this method end game to access the loadout like we did here when we came back from the gulag. We remembered the loadout pattern and we knew the loadout dropped roughly around here based on that pattern. Something to keep in mind is that the perk packages are actually preset and you cannot customize it like you can in multiplayer. And at the time of making this video, the ultimate perk seems like it's bugged. So what I do early game is I either buy my primary weapon if I have a decent secondary gun or vice versa. And then when I complete the stronghold or grab the public loadout, I just grab the secondary or primary gun that I need. So I don't need to use the overkill perk package and I can use another perk package that has fast hands for example. Tip number four is the money glitch. That's right, the one thing that is back from Warzone 1 is the money glitch. This is where you're not able to drop your money for your teammates. Now the easiest way to fix this is to complete a contract which then gives you the reward of completing the contract which appears in your backpack. Now when you drop this completed reward it actually drops the entire glitched amount from your backpack and as a result fixes the money glitch. Moving on to UAVs not being 100% accurate like in Warzone 1. You see in Warzone 1 even if you are halfway up the stairs to a building it will exactly reveal the verticality of your enemies whether they are upstairs or downstairs. If you notice in this clip I'm halfway between ground floor and level 1 and it's still showing me that both enemies are on my level. When I knock the first guy and move upstairs now it reveals the player as being below me. This is something to keep in mind when you're using UAVs as it can get you killed. If you come across a building that says it's locked and wait for public event, it will either be a stronghold or a building that has loot boxes that give you two fully attached weapons with a lot of cash and kill streaks for every loot box you open. So make sure you stick around and these buildings will unlock 10 seconds before the first zone closes. So basically when the stronghold event starts. 
Another way to get inside the locked building is to actually get your teammates to ram you with the vehicle when you're standing at the doors of a locked building but this is probably going to get patched very soon. Next tip I want to give you is in the gulag. You can find armor satchels lying around and you need to actively start grabbing it because if you do win you redeploy with an armor satchel and that extra plate is make or break in most fights. Next tip is regarding proximity chat. Now I love it personally and I hope people keep using it but since I'm on PC I can listen to it and not give my comms away. I have wiped so many squads because they give their position away and it might not even be them talking it could be like a static noise with their mic but now i know you're within 50 odd meters from me so turn it off if you want to sweat it out or leave it on if you want to have fun the choice is yours it's up there are definitely people around you think i'll get heaps of like these fucking proxies down how many proxies you got down brother uh um never mind <laughs> yeah, <we'll> be <laughs> <laughs> buy stations have a limit to how many items you can buy as indicated in the top right of the particular item that you want to buy all buy stations offer armor plates which you can purchase with no limit and one uav but each buy station is unique in everything else it offers and varies from satchels to revive pistols and anti-armor rounds even though the uav limit is one I've had instances where I buy a UAV and then 10 seconds later my teammate was able to buy one too and then other times where we weren't able to buy a UAV at all which means there's some sort of timer associated with it. However, it seems like during a fire sale you can buy as many as you can as long as you have sufficient funds for it because even after I purchased two, my teammate was able to buy multiple as well. Five pistols, it's a new addition to Warzone where you can shoot your teammates with it like a gun and it revives them. There is still a timer for them being revived, but you need to make sure you equip them as your field upgrade when you're about to get into a fight, because even if you don't have self-revive, you can use a revive pistol on yourself. If you don't have it equipped, then you won't be able to use it on yourself if you get knocked. Let's talk about the cold-blooded perk package and how essential it is in Warzone 2. The drones in Warzone 2 are pretty nuts, and in Warzone 1, almost everyone neglected the recon drones but the recon drones in warzone 2 can actually be left in autopilot and will automatically ping the enemies for you even without you controlling them just make sure you place it in such a way where the enemies are likely to be example facing a particular building and recon drone will automatically ping it for you now the bomb drones are a new addition for kill streaks and insanely op late game so make sure you buy them at the buy station or if you loot it make sure you hold on to it this is especially crucial if you're getting held out in the zone they can pretty much guarantee you a kill and ensure your survival and allows you to push up further moving on to the next tip is regarding the buy station kill streak glitch if you buy kill streaks while already having one and if your backpack is full the kill streak you had before purchasing the new one can glitch inside the buy station. So make sure you drop it before purchasing a new one. If your backpack is not full, then it's fine because it gets stowed away in your backpack. Now let's talk about backpacks. You actually spawn in with the small backpack that you can store any additional item that you want to hold. And you have five slots. There are also medium backpacks consisting of seven slots and large ones containing nine slots. Both medium and large needs to be looted and both can store an additional weapon. You obtain them by doing strongholds or looting them from duffel bags for example. As mentioned previously, you can basically store anything you want provided you have that extra space in your backpack. From extra ammo to plates to multiple lethals, tacticals, gas masks, equipment, extra self-revive kits, etc. We actually came across a player that had five self-revive kits. I guess he knew he was going to get knocked a lot. Now, if anyone dies with a backpack on them, we can't loot their backpack unless they have stored away an extra one within their backpack. The next tip I want to give you guys is regarding looting backpacks in particular when you want the gun whether that's yours coming back from the gulag or your enemies. Now you will get the temptation to spam the loot button to pick up everything but stop doing that. Pick up the gun first because if you empty the rest of the contents in the backpack and leave the gun last the backpack will just close and disappear on you. So make sure you grab the gun first and then everything else. There is environmental damage in this game. So there are things in the environment that can actually damage you like this burning silo or even barbed wire that are on some buildings that will instantly get rid of all your plates. So keep an eye out for them guys. The next tip, I know all of you have seen it happen to them or you've seen some sort of video on it. It's basically playing loud music which prevents your enemies from hearing footsteps or comms from their teammates. One of our squad members even has a voice changer on and it scares people and the reactions you get is hilarious. Yo, turn Maddie behind, Maddie behind. 
Stop oh, your fucking shit! <laughs> They're freaking out, he bro. He sounds like fucking Batman. <laughs> the last thing I want to leave you guys with is something that's super frustrating. And it turns out that your wins don't count until you finish the entire credit scene at the end of your game. I certainly hope they fix this as soon as possible and make sure you stay until the end of your game if you do manage to win. Guys, these videos take me hours to make. So if you do enjoy it, consider liking and subscribing for more. And I'll see you all very soon.